Hello, your tech admin here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to host a Minecraft server in Ubuntu. Now, the first thing we need to do is download the server jar file, and we can get to that by going to minecraft.net, going to the download section, and clicking Minecraft server.jar. While we're here, we're also going to go ahead and grab this snippet of code. This will be important for later. So we'll copy that. Now that we have our jar file downloaded, we're just going to move it to somewhere a little easier to work with. Uh, so I'm going to put it in a folder on my desktop called MC Server. Now that we have this here, we're going to go ahead and open the text editor. And we're going to paste that code that we copied from earlier. Um, I don't know what happened there. I need to copy it again. Let's see. There we go. And there it is. Okay. So we need to make one change to this code, and that's we need to specify where the jar file is stored. And we can do that by simply opening the browser and holding control, pressing L, and copying this location, and just pasting it right in front of uh, Minecraft server.jar in the command. Um, so it should look something like this. Also make sure there's a forward slash between the end of the location and Minecraft server.jar that was already in there. Now while we're here I'm going to go ahead and explain this uh, bit of code here. This sets the memory for the server. Um, XMX sets the maximum amount, XMS sets the minimum amount. So if you need to change this to a higher or lower amount you can go ahead and do that now in this area, but um, one gigabyte, which is what it's set to here, is a pretty uh, a pretty good default. And this guy here, no GUI, disables the server's management interface. So um, if you want to see that, you just take that bit of code out, and it'll show up when you launch the script. Now that we have this done, we can go ahead and save this script. I'm going to save it in the same folder as a jar file. I'm just going to call it minecraft.sh. The .sh is important, so make sure you add that on the end. Alright, we can close this now. We're going to open a terminal, and we're going to browse to our script. So for me, that's CD desktop and MC server. Alright, if we do an ls, we can see our files in there, but it's white. Uh, which means it's not executable. So to fix this, we need to just go over to our file, right-click it, go to Properties, Permissions, and Allow Executing. And now if we ls again, we can see that it's turned green, which means we can execute that file. We're just going to go ahead and do a, a period, or full stop, forward slash, and then the name of the file, which is minecraft.sh. And that will start the server. And we can see it's preparing the world down here. And, uh, also, if we go back to our folder here, we can see that it's populated all the configuration files for the server. So if you need to make edits to your server properties, you can do that now. Just make sure you stop the server first. So uh, now that we have this set, I'm going to go ahead and log into Minecraft to show that it's working. Alright, so the server's address, um, if you're just connecting to your own server on your on the same machine, here you could just type localhost, and that would work just fine. However, if you're connecting to another machine on your local network, you're going to want to get the IP address of the machine that's running the server, and it's pretty easy to do that. You're just going to go up here to the networking icon. Uh, it may look different if you're connected to LAN, I'm connected to Wi-Fi, and uh, go to connection information and this is what we're looking for so I'm just going to copy this and paste it right in there done and we can see that it has found the server and it's running I'm not actually going to connect to it because um, my laptop can't really handle recording Minecraft that well so we can see that the server is running and everything seems to be working so now I'm going to go ahead and show you that uh, that management interface in case you're wanting to see that so I'm going to stop the server by simply typing stop. We just come it uh, save the chunks for the nether and the world. So we're going to go back to our file here and we're going to edit it. And we're going to take that no GUI out. 
save it again, and come back to our terminal, execute the script again, and this is the uh, management interface that I was telling you about. Um, it does have some useful features like telling you your memory usage and um, gives you a player list as well as allowing you to chat. And uh, Some people like this. I don't really care for it. Um, most of this stuff can be done through the uh, terminal anyway. So uh, once you're tired of it, just make sure you stop your server and just edit that file again and add no GUI back to the end. Now, um, you may have noticed that when I when I told you how to connect to the server earlier, I didn't mention uh, people connecting outside of your network um, from a different LAN. In order to do this, you're going to have to do some port forwarding. This video is not going to cover that, but there are plenty of videos on how to do that. You'll have to go into your router and basically just um, forward port 25565, I believe is the default. And let's see, i can tell you that right now. Yeah, port 25565 is the port you'll have to forward. Um, that can be changed in the server properties if you already have something on that port that you're running. And besides that, uh, once you get the port forwarded on your router, you'll just give the uh, the players your external IP address, which you can find by simply Googling what is my IP address, and you should be good to go from there. So that about wraps it up for hosting a Minecraft server in Ubuntu. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll be happy to reply as soon as I get a chance. So uh, thanks for watching, guys.